Hi, welcome to the Coca-Cola Case Competition in partnership with Middle Tennessee State University. I'm Wesley Sarzosa, and this is Courtney Eckerly. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about Coca-Cola Bottling Company's current strategy. Okay, so currently their strategic arena is their channels and marketing is mostly geared towards other businesses, so they're business to business, um, and they, which means they sell to other companies. The products they sell to these companies are beverages that are diversified, and that includes Powerade, Minute Maid, Monster, Dasani, just to name a few of the products that they bottle. The places where they distribute these products are mostly in the Southeast, Midwest, and Mid-Atlantic. And they find these new buyers by sending out sales reps to these near territories, which is also known as on-premise sales. So for quality, Coca-Cola's reputation helps bottling company maintain a credible image. Because of this credible image, they are able to price their products at a premium price for efficiency, Coca-Cola Bottling Company saves money and time by outsourcing their products to different facilities. The three primary delivery systems that they use are bulk, advanced sales, and full service. For innovation and creativity, Coca-Cola Bottling Company uses extensive management and operational training on organizational processes for new territory facilities. An example of this would be open door policy versus a hierarchy policy. Their competitive advantage, we think, is their quality. Since they partner with a global, globally recognized brand, Coca-Cola, they are able to use that brand recognition as credibility for future endeavors. This leverages Coca-Cola's skills and experience in crafting and acquiring new beverages. Our analysis of the company is that for quality, by using Coca-Cola's nationally recognized brand image, and their distribution network, CCBCC is able to attain the trust and brand loyalty of consumers. For efficiency, by using the three different delivery systems that they have, bulk, full service, and advanced sales, um, CCBCC is able to achieve a high level of efficiency, which saves a lot of uh, amount of money and time. Next, we're going to be taking a look at the environmental analysis for Coca-Cola Bottling Consolidated Company. Some of the financial ratios we want to look at here, they have a net profit margin of 1.7%, an asset turnover of 1.29, which is good because it's over 1, and they also have a return of equity of 3.25, which shows they return a lot to their investors who have equity within the company. The value chain, um, we're going to start off with materials management. Agreements with Coca-Cola Company, along with other bottlers, um, allows them to have trademark and agreement rights for supplies and bottling methods. Um, next is also operations. The acquisition of new territories and products is one of their uh, biggest strategies here in the, net, in the past five years. Uh, and marketing, they have co-budgeting uh, to advertise with brands on behalf of Coca-Cola Bottling Company. So they co-budget with Coca-Cola, and other bottlers that they sell um, to advertise on Coca-Cola Bottling's behalf. Uh, the strengths of Coca-Cola Bottling is that they have the backing of Coca-Cola, one of the most recognized brand names in the world. Coca-Cola Company has been around for 115 years, and they have a very highly praised image, so Coca-Cola Bottling is able to inherit that by having a partnership with Coke. Weakness, um, Coca-Cola uh, company actually being such a dominant brand uh, seems to almost actually be overshadowing Coca-Cola bottling company's contribution um, to the distribution network uh, that they provide for Coca-Cola and the other bottlers. The opportunity that we see in, uh, in the future for Coca-Cola bottling is sustainable growth through acquisitions of new territories and beverage brands. They have acquired many territories to the southeast and mid-Atlantic areas and um, the growth is projected to be very good in these areas and also with the shifting trends in consumer health um, and consumer health consciousness, uh, the new beverages is a big area that they're looking to break into as well. 
uh, threats. The inability to successfully integrate with these newly acquired territories, uh, since they are new to the area, they will have to assess what uh, products sell where, sell well, and how they need to advertise for that area. And as I said, we're going through a big shift in consumer health lifestyles, so they'll have to consider that. Um, there's also a limited voting power for common stockholders because of a dominant share held by the Harrison family of over 80% of the common stock. An increase in labor costs and employment could also prove to cut down on their profit margin in the future, possibly. And the beverage company level and the individual bottlers, along with Coca-Cola, their ability to advertise independently will also impact how Coca-Cola is able to sell and distribute their products for them. Next, we're going to be looking at strategic concerns for Coca-Cola bottling coming here in the future. We believe that they might be suffering from a perception from the public view of a marketing myopia with Coca-Cola's brand backing. Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated actually distributes 275 different brands of carbonated, still, and different types of beverages. Uh, so we believe that possibly that Coca-Cola's brand reputation and globally recognized brand image might be actually overshadowing Coca-Cola Bottling's companies ability to independentize themselves as the, as the distribution network here in the southeast. So we're not suggesting that they cut ties with Coca-Cola whatsoever because there's such a strong brand image and partnership with that with Coca-Cola company, but we're just suggesting that maybe creating a more of an independent image will actually boost sales for both Coca-Cola bottling and Coca-Cola company. Uh, also, the, as we mentioned, there's a limited voting power for shareholders because 80% of the common stock is held by the Harrison family. Uh, and, you know, we're not saying that we need to dump all the stock for the Harrison family, but maybe selling some of that common stock off to diversify shareholders would also prove um, something that they want to be concerned about. Here we have a visual representation of what we'd like to see, or what I'm considering the marketing myopia scene. We've got Coca-Cola the recognized brand that we're mentioning, but then also as you can see there's a variety of other products that are shipped, bottled um, by Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Um, so we're trying to bring color to all these other beverages that are supplied by Coca-Cola Bottling. Next we have our recommendations for Coca-Cola Bottling Company. So as we mentioned, we figured, we figured out that there might be a marketing myopia perception from the public image of Coca-Cola bottling. So what we're, what we're basically saying is that people might think that Coca-Cola bottling is only interested with selling Coke, so the soft drink, but that's quite the opposite. They've expanded territories and diversified their still beverage options more than ever, and this is to meet the shifting consumer demand. One way we think we can internally start changing Coca-Cola bottling's image from just being a Coke soft drink supplier would be to possibly change the name to Coke Beverages and Bottling Company Consolidated. You still hold the Coke name, but you also emphasize the beverages, so you emphasize that there's a variety that they may offer, and also the bottling and company is still resonating from the previous uh, company name. For another internal shift, we'd like to maybe also recommend a uniform change possibly allowing your employers to, or your employees to choose from shirts and hats of their favorite beverages that are shipped and distributed by Coca-Cola bottling. Another internal shift that we wanted to talk about and we've mentioned throughout our presentation is the selling off of some of the Harrison common stock just to diversify uh, in shareholders. I think that would bring a more appealing image from the internal shareholder company view. Another, uh, another suggestion for an internal shift would be the new, ship, new shipment containers with wraps on them featuring different uh, brands shipped by Coca-Cola bottling, so not just having a dominant red truck and shipping container, but diversifying with Sprite, Minute Maid, Monster, a lot of these, a lot of these other uh, brands that are well recognized and that are distributed by Coca-Cola bottling. An external idea that we had would be to provide a mobile survey with a hat incentive. So you could take the same approach with providing hats on an internal level for your employees to choose from to show a shift in the company image towards a multi-beverage distributor. You could take those same hats and offer a survey incentive for 
uh, respondents to fill out a survey of their favorite beverages, are they aware that it was shipped by Coca-Cola bottling, and by completing the survey they get to choose their favorite brand logo hat. We think this will resonate extremely well with up and coming millennials and Generation Y because we are very um, drawn to novelty tangible items. Um, so seeing like if I had to choose it would definitely be like a Fanta hat and I would love to see something like that brought in by Coca-Cola bottling to maybe shift that public perception that they are just a Coke soft drink distributor. Here's an image that we have. So as we mentioned, the shipping container wraps, um, you see these all across the southeast and midwest area. And so we were suggesting maybe doing a collage wrap such as this. We think we still reflect the Coca-Cola brand image. We still have the red carrier truck, but we're showing the family of Coca-Cola beverage items that are shipped by Coca-Cola Bottling Company.